You are about to embark upon the great crusade. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Welcome to the Army Flashcards Ranger School Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Wiley, and we've been doing this podcast for several episodes now, so we're going to cut this introduction down a bit. For those of you who this is your first time, this is simply a reading of the Ranger Handbook. And for everybody, if you want some more resources for Ranger School, be sure to check out our website at armyflashcards.com. And with that, let's get into it. This is Chapter 5, Demolitions. This chapter introduces rangers to the characteristics of explosives, low and high, initiation systems, modernized demolition initiator, MDI components, detonation systems, safety considerations, expedient explosives, breaching charges, and timber cutting charges. Refer to TM 3-34.82 for more information. 5-1. Low explosives have a detonating velocity up to 1300 feet per second, which produces a pushing or shoving effect. High explosives have a detonating velocity of 3,280 to 27,880 feet per second, which produces a shattering effect. See Table 5-1 on pages 5-1 and 5-2. Table 5-1, Characteristics of U.S. Demolitions Explosives. So in Table 5-1, there's 19 different types of explosives. Uh, I'm only going to read you through the six most common types. Name, TNT. Applications, demolition charge, composition explosive, detonation velocity, 22,600 feet per second, RE factor, 1.00, fume toxicity, dangerous, water resistance, excellent. Composition C4, also known as M112. Applications, cutting and breaching charges, detonation velocity, 26,400 feet per second, RE factor, 1.34, Fume toxicity, slightly dangerous, water resistance, excellent. M1 dynamite, application, demolition charge, detonation velocity, 20,000 feet per second, RE factor, 0.92, fume toxicity, dangerous, water resistance, fair. Detonation cord, application, priming demolition charge, detonation velocity, 20,000 to 24,000 feet per second. RE factor, none. Fume toxicity, slightly dangerous, water resistance, excellent. Bangalore Torpedo, M1 Alpha 2. Applications, demolition charge, detonation velocity, 25,600 feet per second, RE factor, 1.17, fume toxicity, dangerous, water resistance, excellent. And shape charges, the M2 Alpha 3, M2 Alpha 4, and M3 Alpha 1, applications cutting charge, detonation velocity 25,600 feet per second, RE factor 1.17, fume toxicity dangerous, water resistance excellent. End table 5-1. Initiating priming systems. 5-2. The best way to prime demolition systems is with MDIs. These are blasting caps attached to various lengths of time fuse or shock tube. They can be used with a fuse igniter and detonating cord to create many firing systems. In the absence of MDI, field expedient methods may be used. 5-3. A shock tube is a thin plastic tube of extruded polymer with a layer of special explosive material on the interior surface. Explosive material propagates a detonation wave that moves along the shock tube to a factory crimped and sealed blasting cap. Detonation is normally contained within the plastic tubing. However, burns may occur if the shock tube is held. Advantages of a shock tube... It is extremely reliable, offers instant electric initiation, and it also prevents radio transmitters, static electricity, and such from accidentally causing an initiation. It may be extended using leftover sections from previous operations. 5-4 Five types of MDI blasting caps are available to replace the M6 electric and M7 non-electric blasting cap. Three are high strength and two are low strength. High strength blasting caps can prime all standard military explosives including detonating cord, and initiate the shot tube for other MDI blasting caps. The five blasting caps are A. M11 
Battery crimped to 30 feet of shock tube. A movable J-hook is attached for quick and easy attachment to detonation cord. A red flag is attached 1 meter from the blasting cap and a yellow flag 2 meters from the blasting cap. B. M14. Battery crimped to 7.5 feet of time fuse. May be initiated using a fuse igniter or a match. Burn time for total length is about 5 minutes. Yellow bands indicate calibrated 1 minute time intervals. C. M15. Two blasting caps factory crimped to 70 feet of shock tube. Battery crimped to 7.5 feet of time fuse. Each blasting cap has delay elements to allow for stage detonations. Low strength blasting caps. Used as a relay device to transmit a shock tube detonation impulse from an initiator to a high strength blasting cap. D. M12. Is factory crimped to 500 feet of shock tube on a cardboard spool. E. M13. Is factory crimped to 1000 feet of shock tube. 5-5. If fuse igniter is unavailable, light the time blasting fuse with a match. Split the fuse at the end. See figure 5-1 on page 5-4. And place the head of an unlit match in the powder train. Light the inserted match head with a flaming match or rub the abrasive on the matchbox against it. This may take several attempts in windy conditions. 5-6. The M81 fuse igniter is used to ignite the time blasting fuse. It is also used to initiate the shock tube of MDI blasting caps. Note. High altitudes and colder temperatures increase burn time. Detonation Firing Systems 5-7 The two types of firing systems are MDI alone or MDI plus detonating cord. An MDI alone firing system is one in which the initiating set, transmission, and branch lines are constructed using MDI components and the explosive charges are primed with MDI blasting caps. Construct the charge in the following manner. 1. In place and secure explosive charge such as C4, TNT, or creating charge on target. 2. Place a sandbag or other easily identifiable marker over the M11, M14, or M15 blasting cap. 3. Connect to an M12 or M13 transmission line if desired. 4. Connect blasting cap with shock tube to an M14 cap with time fuse. Cut time blasting fuse to desired delay time. 5. Prime the explosive charge by inserting the blasting cap into the charge. 6. Visually inspect firing system for possible misfire indicators such as cracks, bulges, or corrosion. 7. Return to the firing point and secure a fuse igniter to the cut end of the time fuse. 8. Remove the safety cotter pin from the igniter's body. 9. Actuate the charge by grasping the igniter body with one hand while sharply pulling the pull ring. 5-8. Construct the charge using the above steps for MDI standalone systems. Incorporate detonating cord branch lines into the system using the J-hooks on the M11 shock tube. Tape the ends of the detonation cord reduces the effect of moisture on the system. Safety. 5-9. MDI is not recommended for below ground use, except in quarry operations with water gel or slurry explosives. Use detonating cord when it is necessary to bury prime charges. Do not use M1 dynamite with the M15 blasting cap. The M15 delay blasting cap should be used only with water gel or slurry explosives. 5-10 Do not handle misfires downrange until the required 30 minute waiting period for both primary and secondary initiation systems has elapsed and other safety precautions have been accomplished. 5-11. Never yank or pull hard on the shock tube. This may actuate the blasting cap. Do not dispose of used shock tubes by burning because of potentially toxic fumes given off from the burning plastic. 5-12. Always use protective equipment when handling demolitions. Minimal protection consists of leather gloves, ballistic eye protection, and a helmet. Expedient Explosives 5-13. There are three types of expedient explosives. Improvised shape charge, platter charge, and the grape shot charge. All three are created using common items. 5-14. An improvised shape charge, see figure 5-2 on page 5-6, concentrates the energy of the explosion released into a small area, making a tubular or linear fracture in the target. The versatility and simplicity of these charges make them effective against targets, especially those made of concrete or those with armor plating. 5-15. Bowls, funnels, cone-shaped glasses, champagne glasses with stem removed, are used as cones. Champagne or cognac bottles are excellent materials to use. Charge characteristics are Cavity liners are made of copper, tin, or zinc. If none is available, cut a cavity out of the plastic explosive. Cavity angle works with 30 to 60 degree angles. The cavity in most high explosive anti-tank heat ammunition is 42 to 45 degrees. Explosive height in container is twice the height of the cone measured from the base of the cone to the top of the explosive. Standoff is normally one and a half times the cone's diameter. Detonation point is the exact top center of the charge. 
Cover the blasting cap with a small amount of C4 if any part of the blasting cap is exposed. 5-16. Remove the narrow neck of a bottle or the stem of a glass by wrapping it with a piece of soft, absorbent twine or by soaking the string in gasoline and lighting it. Place two bands of adhesive tape, one on each side of the twine, to hold the twine firmly in place. The bottle or stem is turned continuously with the neck up to heat the glass uniformly. 5-17. A narrow band of plastic explosive placed around the neck and burned gives the same result. After the twine or plastic is burned, submerge the neck of the bottle in water and tap it against some object to break it off. Tape the sharp edge of the bottle to prevent cutting hands while tamping the explosive in place. Do not immerse the bottle in water before the plastic has been completely burned or it could detonate. 5-18 The platter charge device see figure 5-3, turns a metal plate into a powerful blunt nose projectile. The plate should be steel, preferably round, but square can work and weigh from 2 to 6 pounds. The weight of the explosive should equal the weight of the platter. 5-19 Uniformly pack the explosive behind the platter. You only need a container if the explosives fail to remain firmly against the platter. Tape to anchor the explosives if needed. Prime the charge at the exact rear center of the charge. If any part of the blasting cap is exposed, cover it with a small quantity of C4. 5-20 Aim charge at the direct center of the target, ensuring that the charge is on the opposite side of the platter from the target. Effective range is 35 yards from a small target. With practice, a ranger might hit a 55 gallon drum at 25 yards 90% of the time. A gutted fuse igniter can serve as an expedient aiming device. 5-21 To use this anti-personnel fragmentation mine or grape shot charge, see figure 5-4, create a hole in the center bottom of the container for the blasting cap. Place explosives evenly on the bottom of the container. Remove all voids and air pockets by pressing the C4 into place using a non-sparking instrument. 5-22. Place buffer material directly over the top of the explosives. Place projectiles over the top of the buffer materials, then cover to prevent spilling from movement. Aim at the target from approximately 100 feet. Use a small amount of C4 on any exposed portion of the blasting cap. Demolition knots and minimum safe distances. 5-23. Several knots are used in demolitions. Figure 5-5 and figure 5-6 on page 5-9 show a few simple knots that can join demolitions to detonation cord. 5-24. Rangers must remain especially aware of their situations when using demolitions. Table 5-2 on page 5-10 depicts minimum safe distances for employing up to 500 pounds. For charges over 500 pounds of demolitions, see figure 5-7 on page 5-10. Figure 5-5. Various joining knots used in demolitions. The Yuli knot. 8 wraps minimum. Purpose of the Yuli knot is to securely fasten the detonation cord to the explosive. Double overhand knot. Minimum 6 inch pigtail. Purpose of the double overhand knot is to secure the end of the detonation cord. Square knot. Purpose of the square knot is to join the ends of the detonation cord to the explosive. Triple roll knot. Purpose of the triple roll knot is to join branches of the detonation cord. Figure 5 6. British junction knot. With cap and without cap. Purpose of the British junction knot is to join the ends of the detonation cord from multiple charges to one initiating system. Table 5-2. Minimum safe distance for personnel in the open. Bear charge. So there are 25 different rows in this table. I'm going to read you a sample of three. Explosive weight in pounds. 30 pounds. Safe distance. 1,021 feet. Meters. 311. Explosive weight. 150 pounds. Safe distance. 1,752 feet. Meters. 534 meters. Explosive weight, 500 pounds, safe distance, 2,625 feet, 800 meters. Charges, 5-25. Breaching charges are used to break down barriers. There are several types of breaching charges discussed in the remainder of this chapter. Among them are breaching charges for reinforced concrete, materials other than reinforced concrete, and timber cutting charges. For additional information on breaching charges, refer to TM 3-34.82. 5-26. In Table 5-3, the left column represents the thickness of a reinforced concrete wall. The remaining seven columns show the number of packages of C4 required to breach the wall using the charge placements shown in the drawings above the columns. Use Table 5-3 and Tables 5-4 and 5-5 on page 5-12 for breaching charges. 5-27. Use the formula in Figure 5-8 on page 5-13 to calculate the charges, and Table 3-5 on page 3-8 for more information.
Multiply the number of packages of C4 from table 5-3 by the conversion factor from table 5-4 for materials other than reinforced concrete. Figure 5-8 on page 5-13 is the formula to compute the size of a charge needed for concrete, masonry, and rock. 5-28 Table 5-6 lists the sizes of C4 for the different types of timber cutting charges. Figure 5-9 is a depiction of an abatis. An abatis is an obstacle formed by felled trees that impedes the enemy's ability to advance on an avenue of approach. It is made by cutting trees that remain attached to their stumps. Figures 5-10 through 5-15 on pages 5-15 through 5-17 display the types of formulas and charges to use with each situation. The remainder of chapter 5 is a lot of diagrams and tables that honestly I don't feel would be very useful to read to you. Uh, so you should definitely take some time, look through them, understand them. Uh, I will say that the, uh, the Ranger School flashcards deck that we make, they actually cover these pretty extensively. Uh, so either way, it's something you would definitely want to look into more, uh, but just not quite useful to read to you. With that, this ends Chapter 5 of the Ranger Handbook, Demolitions. Next episode is Chapter 6, Movement. So we will cover that next time. Until then, uh, we have a few updates to our website. We just started a new uh, Platoon Tactical Basics section on our blog. Right now we just got a, a down and dirty walkthrough on how to plan an ambush effectively. Uh, so as you're waiting for the next podcast to come out, uh, check out the website armyflashcards.com and start freshening yourself up on some of the more tactical things we're going to get into in the Ranger Handbook here soon. So with that, take care and we'll see you next time.